welcome or welcome back to the channel today is day 398 of playing chess every day until 2000 elo and before we hop into a live game i have a treat for you so we're gonna go full screen for this one we played a game at a 98.9 with three brilliant moves now the brilliant moves are very quite simple but i have to share this with you guys i have to so we are the black pieces and my opponent starts with e4 we get the Karo khan of course come on now uh let's actually flip back to the other layouts real quick okay there we go there we go yeah so we get a Karo khan and we have a two knights we take and we just transpose back into a tartikauer this is all book you guys know what the tartikauer is if you know anything about the Karo khan they developed the bishop, and now I just simply go bishop d6 with the idea that if they give a check, we'll just probably end up trading queens. Don't know if this is the best, but is what it is. They castle, which is the best move, although it just allows me to castle with no complications, no nothing. They push in d4. This is like, if you, if you study chess and your openings at all, all of this has been played many many times and I've, I've probably had this exact position a lot of times on the board we developed the bishop because most times from what i know in the tarot tower is you pin the knight if the bishop is not on e2 if the bishop's on e2 the power of the pin is kind of uh, lost rook e8 that move's gonna happen don't you worry uh, they go c3. It looks like they kind of want to go here or like here. But if they were going to do that plan, they probably should have just played bishop d3 to start, which is one of the more testing lines. That's when they line up this battery. They don't do that. They just protect the pawn. Very reasonable move too. I go rook e8 because this is, this is still basically book theory to me. Now they drop the bishop back. So they must have been like, I don't know, maybe they had some kind of line prepared where they're like, there's some tricky sacrifice. I don't know. Anyways, they just go back. So they spent another move moving the bishop. So I play knight d7. I want to meet queen c2 with knight f8 protecting this pawn so I don't have to create any kind of weakness. They now kick my bishop back. We just go back and... If they want to play g4 and kick my bishop all the way back to g6 and then take, I'm very happy with the pawn cube. Very happy. <laughs> they don't do that. They just develop the bishop. And a lot of the times in these positions, they're, especially with h3 played, really weakening this g3 square. Putting the bishop here... And cause some problems and you will see why very very soon now i just go knight of set or knight of eight this is the plan and now they move the bishop once again it's not a bad move but the bishop went here here and here that's just such a waste of time um and that's kind of why they tell you not to commit your bishops early develop your knights before bishops because you don't usually you don't know where you want to commit your bishop to where the knights usually you know knights are going out to these squares however it is what it is it's not like we're crushing or anything it's just they've they've given us a lot of tempo and in tempo tempo is a or in chess tempo is a currency bishop c7 can you see the idea i think it's quite clear my opponent somehow misses it and plays knight h2 which is just a losing move because we have this beautiful move queen d6 we attack the knight we're threatening to take this with checkmate yes my bishop is hanging but if you take the bishop you get checkmated if you go back i just take that and you cannot take because of checkmate the computer says that the only kind of move here is f4 and then you could probably just take, 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 or even just take. So if this, then just develop. I mean, your position is so much better. So many dark squared weakness. Queen here. And then just, you're just coming in. 
But remember how I said that this can be a problem with the dark squares? Yeah. They try to defend by playing g3. What does that do? It overloads the f2 pawn. The f2 pawn is protecting this bishop, but it's also protecting the g3 square. So imagine this bishop wasn't here. Check and checkmate. So with that in mind, we have to pull our inner Gotham out of us and sacrifice the rook. And if they take, it's main two. But let's say that they do what they did and took the bishop. How do you proceed? You sacrifice the rook again. Okay, so what? <laughs> There's no mate. I mean, they're just not going to take and now everything's going to defend. Yeah, well, you sacrifice the rook once again. And if they take, it's just simply mate. This was a beautiful attack. And yes, the tactics were very simple, but if you play the Karl Khan and the Tartakauer variation, be aware, keep these kind of ideas in your head. You might be able to play like this too. And yeah, I mean, it's just super satisfying to, to play three brilliant moves in one game, let alone in a row. But, but you know, now let's find a real game. And we're going to play 10 plus 0. We are 1959. Looks like we find Mr. Kuf. And we have the white pieces, e4. We got a French defense. We play the Tarage. They go bishop out. Wow, really? It's weird. I don't see why I wouldn't play c3 here. Most times I want to play c3 anyways. I believe if I go knight out too early, there's like some g5 ideas. I might even just play here. Attack this. So they'll have to go back. And now they've used so much time. I could lock it down and just go for an attack, I think. I absolutely don't hate this idea. We have so much space. I probably should stop him from going there. Let's go ahead and play this. It also gives me this kind of square. So if they were to play here, you know, we'll, we'll probably be sitting well. This could be an idea. I want to leave this knight here for now. Maybe I play here. Ooh, actually, wait a minute. If they want to play this. They want to play knight here, I think. Is that an issue? Knight here, knight here. Maybe then we even go here. Or just bring the bishop. Let's play knight here. If they castle, I mean, f4 looks very strong. Followed with like knight g5 ideas and queen h5. You know what I'm thinking? Yeah, it looks like they want to catapult this. So to stop that move, I will be playing f4. They bring the knight in. Uh, let's see. Is this an issue? No. I don't see why I wouldn't just develop my bishop here. Let's just develop the bishop. Oh, I see why I wouldn't develop the bishop. Yeah, I might have actually screwed that one up, but let's just go king f1. Admittedly, I did not uh, respect the, th the threats completely. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of rough. I might have to take. Then he wants to do this. Yeah, we're kind of in a pickle now. Okay, let's play here with the idea of trying to get a knight to f6. Yeah, they don't want me to do that. Now, I can never play this because they sacrifice. So I might have to take and then play here. Just trying to get rid of this queen. Yeah, there's the queen. It's going back. And now, knight here, knight here is the plan. Trying to undermine me. I'll just step up with the king. Instead of takes, takes. It's all protected. So that really weakens this square. Can I get to it? Here, here, here. Potentially. No, that just loses a pawn. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, let's go here. We're attacking this now. Just keep rotating the knight. We're down a pawn. This is a very messy game. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay, let's put the knight here. I think they want to go here and here. I think that was their plan. Now, I'm just going to go check. I mean, we're doubling this. We're looking at that square. Now, what can I do? We can win a pawn back if I wanted, but I don't think that's worth it. I think I want to go here and try to play rook c1. We got to be careful of push and check. Yeah, they're just throwing their pawns forward. That's a free pawn if I want it. But I think first, let's go here with the rook. I feel like my opponent's kind of... Losing a little bit of their threats. Go check. Oh, I'm walking into discoveries. I guess I can just go here. I can probably just trade. I think we're going to be winning back some pawns anyways. Okay. They lock this down. If they take, the knight's there. They do decide to take. 
And now they're trying to undermine this. But I think simply we can just take the pawn. Now if they take here, we'll take back with the knight. Have a beautiful knight. Actually, do we want to do that? I think I need to take with the pawn. Here, here takes... We have probably a permanent weakness. And at least this way, the pawn is kind of restricting the king. And we can maybe go back at some point. Let's to get rid of this knight. Maybe he takes... Now if takes... Oh, they're just going to go there. Yeah, now they're, they're going to pick this pawn up. Oh, my rook. My rook, my rook. Oops. Why did I forget about my rook? I forgot about the pin. Oops. Shoot. I straight up forgot about the pin. That is brutal. Let's go here. Let's pin this. Covered by this square. I guess let's take and then go here. It might be running into some kind of mating net. Check here. Yeah, I think I just need to play king up. Now this is threatening mates, so they need to protect it. This is also or threatening mates. So they gotta go here, but then there's this. Uh, they can make escape. Yeah, let's take. Trying to come in. Check here. Yeah, let's just push. If they want to come in, we'll just move the king. My opponent's playing very quick. Keep moving the king. We're almost there. We're almost ready to promote. Also, this could be a move. They'd have to sacrifice. If they take, we have this, actually. They can't take. Minute 30. They blundered. Let's take that. Now this is coming in. I gotta focus up. I think we gotta just take. Let's get behind the pawn. Step here. I think they're gonna take. I'm not so sure I can win this. I will take a draw. I don't think they're gonna draw though. <laughs> Bring the king. Let's go check. Wait. I have no legal moves other than rook moves. Oh, this just checkmates. Oops. Dang it, man. All right, let's, so let's take a look at this game. I forgot how hard it was to play 10-0 on camera. We got a better position. Yeah, I mean, we got really aggressive with it and allowed this check and kind of gave up all of our advantage. Mm. We should have protected our pawn. We didn't do that. We got the knight to a really nice square, though. And then we did have counterattacks. We could have actually drew the game. Okay, going back was wrong. But then they blunder immediately. They should have took the pawn. Such a tactical position. So many things going on. I lost my, my rook here. I just completely forgot about the, the pin there. What was I supposed to do instead? Give a check. And then if this... Oh, then there's this check. So... I guess he has to, has to go here. And then bring the rook. Attacking this. And if takes... Wait, what about this move? Rook b8. Oh, then he's coming in. Okay. And we got some counterplay here. He had the push to make room for the king, and then this pawn was almost... It was so close. And then he blundered his rook. And this is where it's supposed to be a draw. But I had no time. Should have went all the way over to the side. Give checks. He forced my king there. Yeah. I had to sacrifice here. I, I don't know why I didn't go for this. Ah, dang it, man. Yeah, I was thinking about sacking the rook too. I just missed that there was mate in one. But, yeah, it is what it is. We're only going to play 
this one game today. Yeah, because I'm not I'm not feeling sharp on camera right now. So I'm going to play offline, off camera. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow.